The term handcrafted gets thrown around a lot these days. It's become a movement, a trend, that can obscure the passionate folks who actually make amazing things by hand. Their remarkable stories need to be told, and I'm going to find them. I'm Anthony Bourdain, and this is Raw Craft. San Francisco, this amazing, beautiful city built on the California gold rush of the mid-1800s has always been a printing town. A fact that can get lost in all the tech noise of Silicon Valley. But tucked away in the Presidio, a former military base in the shadow of the Golden Gate Bridge, Arian Press continues to champion the art of bookmaking in one of the last facilities of its kind in the world. Marrying a blend of old world skills, text, and artwork, Arian makes some of the most beautiful books ever imagined. Heavy, tactile works of art. They're a pleasure to see, to touch, and to read. I meet up with founder, master printer, typographer, and creative spirit behind Arian Press, Andrew Hoyam, and wife and partner, Diana Ketchum, to get a true sense of what he's been passionate about for 40 years. So there are two obvious questions. Why, do, why does the world need this? And why would you do such a thing? I mean, when the entire publishing industry has been crying for years that print is in serious decline, you chose this time to bring back print in a big way. Well, it's not that I've revived it. It's never gone away. There have always been, uh, in the history of printing from movable type, those few printers who wanted to do things as well as they possibly could. But it's, it's an adventure, making something uh, of a book that is a tribute to the work of literature to do something we hope will astonish people. There, there's something um, magical about print to me still. I mean, there's a smell to, to a book that, 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 that's, that's special. This is the sort of rabbit hole I could easily fall into. This is very dangerous area. This I would like to own and collect and just have things like this is a very dangerous uh, area for me. <laughs> <laughs> In order to show me how they make these highly sought after works of art, Andrew first took me to their type foundry and introduced me to Chris Goddick, one of their typecasters. So in our books, every letter that you see on the page is an actual individual piece of metal type. Um, and these are the casters that actually create it. And down in here are our 100-year-old old school keyboards um, wow. that create the paper spool. So the way it works is there's two holes for every line, which refer to an X and a Y axis in a mat case that is full of matrices. Essentially, the little holes in the paper yeah. correspond directly yeah. to your eventual typeface? Yeah. Right. And then it gets put in the machine, it moves around left and right and up and down. Um, and when it comes to the character, it casts it. This is like an Enigma machine. The text is meticulously typed out to create a punched paper tape on a spool that will be used to direct the caster, keeping track of the number of justifying spaces in the line. And so after we're done with the spool, we take it over to the caster, the caster like so. So you can actually see all the instructions that are it's given. And this is like 19th century technology? Yeah, so Incredible. this machine here is actually celebrating its 100th birthday this year. Then following the directions on the spool, the caster shoots 750 degree molten lead through the specified character matrix in the mold. The coordinates also indicate the set width of the character, resulting in fully justified individual pieces of type that are ready to print. Well, how many other people are there like you? Um, there are... How big is the community? Yeah. Of... <laughs> so typecasters in the US, there's maybe about 20 in the world, maybe about 50. Um, casting type every day, there's three. Three people cast type every day in the whole world? Yeah. Wow. So the conventions are pretty small. Yeah. Next up is the press room, where printers Blake Riley and Brian Ferret show me how they're printing their newest project, the Lulu Plays, in both red and black ink. So what I'm doing here is I've already gathered the pages. The red form is already locked up in the press. And so now I'm locking up the form, the black form, into the chase, which will then take over. Got to make sure everything is in its right place, otherwise it binds up. Now 
That's locked up. I'm ready to pull the proof. How long have you been doing this? Uh, 15 years. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, seven years. Why would you do this? It's hard. It is hard. It's satisfying. And, you know, if ever there were a time to be making books that's, you know, exciting, say, within the last century, I would say now is, is that moment. The interweb has really kind of uh, relieved the burden of the encyclopedia uh, from the book. So we're in this very unique moment now where it can be restored to a certain sparkly self. And um, it's kind of up to all of us to figure out what that book will look like in the 21st century. And beautiful work. Smells good, too. <laughs> <laughs> Two men appeared. Stop. Indent. One was coming from the best. The printed field. pages the are proofread hand, by reading aloud. The taller one, calm, wearing a linen suit, calm, walked with his hat pushed back, calm, vest unbuttoned and tie in his hand. And then it's time to put the book together. This is last stage of a long process, all of it in-house. Yes. So we do, we bind our own editions. So rather than binding individual books, we're binding three or four hundred copies of a book that we've printed. So you saw the, the press yep. and the press sheets. So this section, sewing section, of these two folded sheets of eight pages each, they get folded in half and half again and inserted into each other to make a sewing section. And Rochelle is punching the sewing holes. So we build a punch. It's just basically bored with needles. Mm -hmm. This is a little stopper that hits the head of the section so that she's punching the holes in the same place every time, which means that when it comes to the sewing, it's basically connecting those dots. Once the holes are punched, the pages are hand sewn together, then head banded, and then the finished cover is glued to the book and pressed. That's awesome. It's like, I have a duck press, actually. And it's it's not... a lot like a duck press. And then when the book is done, when you open it, that's the lie flat. You, you can sort of feel it pop. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Sorry, my flair bartending skills have <laughs> sort of diminished since, uh, the 80s, but uh, there we go. <laughs> the smoke and fumes of the dynamite were gone, and the air was sweet again. It was good to be there, with the peaceful night sounds all around us, the three of us sitting in the night on the far west Texas prairie. I'm nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody, too? And there's a pair of us. The end of Don Quixote. In brief, Don Quixote's end came after he had received all the sacraments and had execrated books of chivalry with many effective words. I mean, it's, it's hard even if you were completely unaware of all of the work or how, and how it was. I mean, it's pretty, there was an undeniable uh, feeling. Uh, you know you're holding a, 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 a quality. There's a heft to this. You know, you know somehow in a tactile way, this is a well-made thing. Whatever it is, it, it's, uh, I'm a big believer in metaphysical aspects, just particularly things like books. Some of our collectors talk about how they're holding their books and they're thinking ahead to a time when people 
they don't even know after they're dead will be holding the same books. Well, this, this is the this is the thing that uh, uh, cooking implements, uh, utensils have, especially really high quality ones that are passed from generation to generation, and, and great books and well made books. Is they have pasts, they have histories, and that's what I, I guess I talk about when I talk about you know magic or to uh, to the magic. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Pour you some more. <laughs>